Well, unless you've been hiding under a rock, you probably know that Tesla stock has been on an absolute tear. You pull up a two year chart of this one and the stock doesn't do very much. A lot of peaks, a lot of troughs, but specifically the last few months, Tesla's been on an absolute tear and here today, stock closed out at nearly $538 a share. And when a stock has a move like that, we gotta talk about is this stock now overvalued? And in today's video, I wanna do my best job possible on trying to explain the valuation on Tesla and my full opinion on if Tesla stock is overvalued or potentially undervalued. So I hope you guys really enjoy, smash the thumbs up button and let's just start getting straight into this guys. So if we look at Tesla's valuation here, okay, ticker symbol TSLA for those that do not know. If we look at the market cap, which is what you're gonna wanna look at when it comes to you know thinking about like how much is a company worth, how much are you truly paying for that company? You're paying uh, about $97 billion for this company. So nearly $100 billion, let's just call it 100 billion. So that's what we are truly paying for Tesla the company, about $100 billion. You see a number like the forward P, and it is 90. Now that is certainly not the highest forward P. I can show you many forward P's that are much higher in the market than that. But at the same time, that is fairly high because most stocks in the stock market trade at forward P somewhere around you know 20 roughly. Now where a lot of folks start getting confused is they start comparing Tesla to other automakers. So they'll compare it to something like Ford. And, and people will say things like, well, Ford, they sell a lot more cars than Tesla. Tesla. They make a lot more profit than Tesla. And yet look at Ford's market cap, a $36 billion market cap. It's nothing compared to Tesla. Ford P on Ford stock is a seven. They'll compare it to something like a General Motors, a GM stock at a $50 billion market cap. We're talking about Tesla's a double up of GM now. And General Motors has about a five and a half Ford P on it. They'll compare it to companies like Fiat Chrysler, another company that does way bigger numbers than Tesla here today, but has a teeny tiny tiny market cap compared to Tesla. I mean, you look at Fiat Chrysler's market cap, we're looking at 27 billion roughly and a trailing P on Fiat Chrysler of about six. And what some folks don't understand is the stock market is not just about what's going on today, but it's about what's going on in the future. And if you look at Ford, GM, Volkswagen, Fiat Chrysler, BMW, it doesn't matter any of these big players, there's a huge change that's going on in the market right now that these companies have to adjust to and it's not just one change, it's two changes. Obviously, the, the main change is just going to electric vehicles. This is not a trend. This is not something that's going away. All cars will be electric in the future. And so you're going from building ICE vehicles to electric vehicles, and it's just different. It's just a different process. It's just different how you build them. The tech's much different. It's a whole different ball game than building an ICE vehicle, okay? And there's also the move to autonomous vehicles, where in just a few years from now, it's gonna be expected that if you want that vehicle, that car you're driving, that SUV, that truck, whatever, if you want that vehicle to drive itself, it's gonna be expected that the vehicle can do that. I don't know how many automakers are gonna successfully be able to compete with electric vehicles, one, and then secondly, with autopilot. And so if you think about a huge transformation like this, we can go back just over a decade ago because we saw another massive transformation that changed the fates of some really large companies out there, okay? And that was in the cell phone industry. So when you had the change from flip phones, which if you go back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we all were walking around with flip phones. And then Apple drops the bombshell on the world, which was the iPhone first showing that off in 2007. And that iPhone completely changed the game because it was going from flip phones, which was a way different hardware and software experience compared to a smartphone. And people absolutely love the smartphone. They're like, we need smartphones. And then what ended up happening was almost all the flip phone companies became irrelevant and all these new companies began to become giants, okay? And so if you think about the smartphone market, the biggest players are Samsung, Apple, Huawei, and Xiaomi. All four of those companies were nobodies when it came to the flip phone era, okay? The flip phone era was dominated by Nokia and a few other companies, but Nokia being the main one, and here we are, we had this huge change, which was smartphones, and four massive companies were created out of that. And it was just a fundamental change on the way, you know, those devices basically operated, and the way they looked, and all those sorts of things, and now we have a 
very similar thing going on with automobiles, okay? Now, what makes Tesla's valuation even more confusing is seeing things like this today, okay? Ark Invest, the money manager there, she comes out, Catherine, right? She says that Tesla stock's going to $6,000 per share over the next five years. And you hear a number like that, $6,000 over the next five years, and it's like, it's like hard to even wrap your head around that. You see videos from someone like myself. I believe Tesla stock's gonna be $3,000 plus a share in 2029. And so Tesla's valuation gets even more confusing because you're looking at it and you're realizing you can't really compare it to the Fords and the GMs because who knows if they'll be around. And then you have some other individuals throwing out some insanely high numbers and it just gets confusing. And so if we draw it back to like, like what were some of the biggest market caps back in let's say the, the flip phone days? We saw a company like BlackBerry, right? Remember BlackBerry when that was like the thing, right? They had a valuation that was 60 billion, 70 billion dollars back around the time the iPhone came out. And so you might have thought that was a big valuation, a 60 or 70 or maybe even an 80 billion dollar valuation that BlackBerry had. But then Apple came along with the smartphone and just completely changed the game. If you look at Apple stock, it's a company that's approaching a one and a half trillion dollar market cap. And so it was just a fundamental change in the products and the profitability and what you could make off those products and the dominance and all those sorts of things, okay? You look at another company, Nokia, right? Nokia was by far and away the biggest player in the pre-smartphone era, okay? They were by far the biggest player. There was one year, I looked it up, okay? There was one year prior to like the iPhone coming out and whatnot, Nokia had nine of the 10 most popular phones in the world were Nokia. <sighs> Unbelievable, okay? And Nokia's valuation had peaked around, you know, 120, 140 billion. And in terms of Nokia's market cap, it literally peaked right when the iPhone came out. And so if you think it's just easy to go ahead and make a new product or something like that, and it's like, okay, we're dominant in this era, and oh, there's this way different thing that comes out. Let's just change up, and let's just start doing that thing. It's absolutely not. Ask BlackBerry about it. Ask Nokia. Ask any of the old players that were dominant players in the flip phone era, and ask those those companies how they did when smartphones came around because every one of those companies became irrelevant and new Goliath companies were built and those new Goliath companies were more profitable than you ever thought were possible back in the flip phone cell phone days okay once again Apple here today about 1.4 trillion dollar market cap and so I tell you that story because that was a massive change that happened in technology and I see a lot of similarities between what is going on with the electric vehicles right now and autonomous vehicles and how a lot of these legacy players, I'm not even convinced a lot of them will be around. We're going to see a lot of buyouts and we're going to see a lot of bankruptcies from a lot of huge companies that you thought would never go bankrupt. And so if we're thinking about valuation on Tesla, okay, here's what I don't even want to do in this video, okay? We're not even going to talk about autonomous taxi networks in this video. We're not even going to talk about autonomous freight networks. We're not even going to talk about about the solar business. We're not even going to talk about the battery business. We're not even going to speculate on future products and services that the public doesn't even know about that Tesla will be coming out with in future years. Let's not talk about any of that. I want to explain to you why Tesla is going to likely have a market cap of hundreds of billions, if not a trillion dollar market cap in the future, just off of its auto business. Not talking about autonomous taxi networks, freight networks, solar business, any of that. We're not going to get into that stuff. That stuff is just cherries on top, okay? Let's just talk about autos in relation to Tesla's valuation here, okay? So the first thing I want to look at, I want to look at the number of cars sold worldwide in the most recent years. And what we're going to find is usually, you know, like 70 something million cars are sold worldwide per year. And now we could talk about, you know, that, that number might go down some, that number might go up some, and who knows where all that shakes out. But a very small percentage of those vehicles were actually electric vehicles. In my opinion, over the course of, of this decade, we'll move to nearly a hundred percent of those vehicles will be electric vehicles. I cannot picture somebody going to a car dealership 
in nine years from now and saying, gosh, I really want an ICE vehicle. That's just not going to happen. And even if I look to like the United States and Europe, I believe it's hard to, for me to even fathom in three years from now, people are walking on an auto dealership lot and saying, I want an ICE vehicle. And that's in three years from now. Never mind if we're talking five years from now, seven years from now, 10 years from now. So that's 70 something million number over the course of the next decade, that's going to move to 100% or very, very close to 100% electric vehicles, okay? Now, let's do a little math here, all right? So Tesla has about a 17% market share when it comes to electric vehicles. I believe they will be able to maintain that. So if we run a number about 70, you know, let's say 77 million cars are sold per year, and let's say 17% of those vehicles are Teslas, that would mean Tesla would sell around 13 million electric cars and that once again is at a 17% market share which I think is absolutely doable for Tesla I can easily foresee over the next decade Tesla getting to a place where they're building you know 5 million 10 million cars a year with the possibility of going up to potentially maybe 15 million cars a year now let me show you some more math around this so you can kind of start wrapping your head around this okay so if Tesla sells 13 million cars at an average selling price of 45 thousand keep in mind some of those vehicles will be cheaper than that and some of the vehicles will be much more expensive it depends on the market and keep in mind over the course of the next five ten years what happens things get more expensive okay so if you go ahead and do the math on 13 million vehicles sold an average selling price of around forty five thousand dollars you get nearly $600 billion in revenue, $589 billion in revenue to be exact. And once again, that's just accounting for autos. This isn't accounting for any of Tesla's other businesses they have today that are expanding very rapidly. This isn't accounting for any future products and services Tesla has. This isn't accounting for the Tesla insurance products. This isn't accounting for any of that. This is just vehicles sold. So you can see how insane these numbers start to get, okay? Now let's go ahead and do some more math. Let's assume just 15% of that money actually reaches the bottom line, which I think is a low number because electric vehicles over time, in my opinion, will be much more profitable than historically the ICE vehicles have been, okay? So if just 15% of that $589 billion reaches the bottom line, we're looking at $88 billion in net income just from the auto sales business. And this isn't accounting for any of the other businesses. So if you look at it just from this perspective, at if they're doing 88 billion in net income, you could easily throw a $1 trillion market cap. And it would totally be a fair valuation if this company has $88 billion of net income. A $1 trillion market cap is very easy to see, which is from here still a 10X. So this company could potentially do a 10X plus over the next 10 years if they're able to execute and hit these type of numbers, okay? Once again, we're not talking about autonomous taxi networks, autonomous freight networks, solar business, battery business, Business, other future products. We're not talking about supercharger network. We're not talking about Tesla insurance. We're not talking about any of that stuff. And here's why Tesla stock is such a frustrating stock because people look at it and they just look at what Tesla's doing now and they're not looking through the crystal ball at all and they're not looking at the huge competitive advantages and they're not looking at the fact that all vehicles in the future will be electric vehicles. The only question is, is it take us three years to get there, five years from, to get there, seven years? years to get there or 10 years to get there. But in my opinion, there's a 0% chance that the majority of vehicles made, new vehicles made, will be anything but electric within the next 10 years. And so when we start thinking about this and we think about Tesla's market share and their lead they have when it comes to building these and ramping these vehicles and the autopilot system and all these sorts of things in Tesla's marketing and the strong brand, when we start putting all these things together, it's very easy to foresee a future where Tesla is a company that's worth hundreds of billions of dollars in the future, if not a trillion dollar company someday. And so I can definitely see why somebody like ARK Invest, which is one of Tesla's biggest investors, foresees this being a trillion dollar company in the future. Because when you just start working out the math and you just pull out a calculator and start doing the numbers, things start getting very, very interesting on Tesla stock. So can I say, 
Tesla stock is overvalued. It's only overvalued if you're just looking at what Tesla's doing today. Absolutely, if you're only paying attention to what Tesla did in 2019 and what they're gonna do in 2020, the stock absolutely looks overvalued. But when you start looking at three years out, five years out, seven years out, this stock actually looks like a deal and a half, even though the stock price has gone up substantially. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this today. This is my opinion on if this stock's overvalued or undervalued. In a recap, it's absolutely overvalued if all you're paying attention to is today, and it's absolutely undervalued if what you're looking at is the next five to 10 years. So I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button and share this video with somebody that might be interested in Tesla stock, might be a Tesla shareholder, or somebody that you've talked to in the past that might not be able to formulate an opinion on Tesla stock because they might be looking at things too short term and they might not be looking at market characteristics like we saw with a huge tech changeover when we went from flip phones to smartphones. And with that being said, guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.